In this new notation, instead of writing plans as a linear sequence of, say, suck, move right, and suck, I'm going to write them as a tree structure. So we start off in this belief state here, so a diagram like this, and then we do a suck action. We end up in a new state, and then we do a right action, and now we have to observe the world, and if we observe that we're still in state A, we loop back to this part of the plan. And if we observe that we're in B, we go on and then execute the suck action, and now we're at the end of the plan. So we see that there's a choice point here, which we indicate with this uh, sort of tie, to say we're following a straight line, but now we can branch. There's a conditional, and we can either loop or we can continue on. So we see that this finite representation represents an infinite sequence of plans. And we could write it in a, a more sort of linear notation as S while we observe A, do R, and then do S. Now, what can we say about this plan? Does this plan achieve the goal? Well, what we can say is that if the stochasticity is uh, independent, that is, if sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, then with probability 1 in the limit, this plan will in fact achieve the goal. But we can't state uh, any bounded number of steps uh, under which it's guaranteed to achieve the goal. We can only say it's guaranteed at infinity. Now, I've told you what a successful plan looks like, but I haven't told you how to find one. The process of finding it can be done through search, just as we did in problem solving. So remember in problem solving, we start off in a state, and it's a single state, not a belief state, and then we start uh, searching a tree, and we have a big uh, triangle of possible states that we search through, and then we find one path that gets us all the way to a goal state. And we pick from this big tree a single path. So, with belief states and with branching uh, plan structures, we do the same sort of process, only the tree is just a little bit more complicated. So, here we show one of these trees, and it has uh, different possibilities. So, for example, we start off here, and we have one possibility that the first action will be going right, or another possibility that the first action will be performing a suck. Uh, but then it also has branches that are part of the plan itself. So this branch here is actually part of the plan, as we saw before. It's not a branch in the search space, it's a branch in the plan. So what we do is we search through this tree, we try write as a first action, we try suck as a first action, we keep out expanding nodes until we find a portion of the tree, like this path is a portion of this search tree. We find that portion, which is a successful plan, according to the criteria of reaching a goal. So let's say we performed that search, we had a big search tree, and then we threw out all the branches except once. And this branch of the search tree does itself have branches, but this branch of the search tree through the belief state represents a single plan, not multiple possible plans. Now what I want to know is, for the single plan, what can we guarantee about it? So Say we wanted to know, is this plan guaranteed to find the goal in an unbounded number of steps? And what do we need to guarantee that? So, it's an unbounded solution. Do we need to guarantee that some leaf node is a goal? So, for example, here's a plan, it goes through, and at the bottom there's a uh, leaf node. Now, if this uh, were in problem solving, then remember it would be a sequence of steps with no branches in it, and we know it's a solution if the one leaf node is a goal. But for these with branches, do we need to guarantee that some leaf is a goal? Or 
do we need to guarantee that every leaf is a goal? Or is there no possible guarantee that will mean that for sure we've gotten a solution, although the solution may be of unbounded length? Then I also want you to answer, what does it take to guarantee that we have a bounded solution? That is, a solution that is guaranteed to reach the goal in a bounded finite number of steps. Do we need to have a plan that has no branches in it, like this branch, or a plan that has no loops in it, like this loop that goes back to a previous state, or is there no guarantee that we have a bounded solution? And the answer is we have an unbounded solution if every leaf in the plan ends up in a goal. So if we follow through the plan, no matter what path we execute based on the observations, and remember, we don't get to pick the observations. The observations come into us and we follow one path or another based on what we observe. So uh, we can't guide it in one direction or another, and so we need every possible leaf node. This one only has one, but if a plan had multiple leaf nodes, every one of them would have to be a goal. Now, in terms of a bounded solution, it's okay to have branches but not to have loops. If we had branches, and we ended up with one goal here, and one goal here in uh, one, two, three steps, one, two, three steps, that would be a bounded solution. But if we have a loop, it might be one, two, three, four, five. We don't know how many uh, steps it's going to take. Now, some people like manipulating trees, and some people like a more sort of formal mathematical notation. So if you're one of those, I'm going to give you another way to think about whether or not we have a solution. Now let's start with the problem solving, uh, where a plan consists of a straight line sequence. And we said one way to decide if uh, this is a plan that satisfies the goal is to say, is the end state a goal state? If we want to be more formal and write that out mathematically, what we can say is what this plan represents is we started in the start state and then we transitioned to the state that is a result of applying the action of going from A to S to that start state. And then we applied to that the result of starting in that intermediate state and applying the action of going from S to F. And if that resulting state is an element of the set of goals, then this plan is valid. This plan is, uh, gives us a solution. And so that's a mathematical formulation of what it means for this plan to be a goal. Now, in stochastic, partially observable worlds, the equations are a little bit more complicated. Instead of just having uh, S prime as a result of applying some action to the initial state, we ha we're dealing with belief states rather than individual states. And what we say is our new belief state is a result of updating what we get from predicting what our action will do, and then updating it based on our observation O of the world. So the prediction step is when we start off in a belief state, we look at the action, we look at each possible result of the action, because they're stochastic, to each possible member of the belief state, and so that gives us a larger belief state, and then we update that belief state by taking account of the observation, and that will give us a smaller or same size belief state. And now that gives us the new state. And we can use this predict and update cycle to keep track of where we are in a belief state. Here's an example of tracking the predict update cycle. And this is in a world in which the actions are uh, guaranteed to work as advertised. That is, if you suck, clean up the current uh, location, and if you move right or left, uh, the wheels actually turn and you do move. But uh, we can call this the uh, kindergarten world 
because there are little toddlers walking around who can deposit dirt in any location at any time. So, if we start off in uh, this state and execute the suck action, we can predict that we'll end up in one of these two states. And then, if we have an observation, well, we know what that observation is going to be, because we know the suck action always worked, and we know we were in A, so the, op the only observation we can get is that we're in A and that it's clean. We end up in that same uh, belief state. And then if we execute the uh, right action, uh, well, then lots of things could happen, because we move right, and uh, somebody might have dropped dirt in the right location, and somebody might have dropped dirt in the left location, or maybe not. And so we end up with four possibilities, and then uh, we can uh, update again when we get the next observation. Say, if we observed uh, that we're in B and it's dirty, then uh, we end up in this belief state. And we can keep on going, uh, specifying new belief states as a result of successive predicts and updates. Now, this predict-update cycle gives us a kind of calculus of belief states that can tell us really everything we need to know. But there is one weakness with this approach, is that as you can see here, some of the belief states start to get large. And this is a tiny little world. Already we have a belief state with uh, four world states in it. We could have one with 8, 16, 10, 24, whatever. And it seems that there may be more succinct representations of a belief state rather than to just list all the world states. For example, take this one here. If we had divided the world up not into individual world states, but into varia variables describing that state, then this whole belief state could be represented just by vacuum is on the right. So the whole world could be represented by uh, three states or three variables. One, where is the vacuum? Is it on the right or not? Secondly, is there dirt in the left location? And third, is there dirt in the right location? And we can have some formula over those variables to describe states. And with that type of formulation, some very large states, in terms of enumerating the world states, can be made small in terms of the description. 